Greetings and welcome to Jeffico Films, a sci-fi 1996 with Tiger Blood Charlie Sheen. Sign me up. So let's review The Arrival. Starts out with Alana, who's taking pictures and smelling flowers, but she's in the Arctic. That shouldn't be there. Then we head to a satellite. Then we see Charlie Sheen, who plays Zane Zeminski, and he's making notes, checking stars at his work, and a phone call comes, and his girlfriend says he spends too much time there and doesn't spend enough time with her, so he agrees to leave, but then a signal comes in, Wolf 256, and he has to do several stages of verification. Bank, uh, Ohio State, Moffitt Field. Checking here, still checking. Just be there. We gotta get another ear on this thing. Both were self checked. Phase two complete. Next day, he goes to see Phil Gordy and his boss. 14.6 light years is how far away the signal originated from. He tries to convince his boss about it, but he says there's gonna be cutbacks all of a sudden, and he's getting fired. Look, I don't have to tell you. You know the rule. If you can't confirm it, then it doesn't exist. Well, what asshole made up that rule? Can we fire him instead? Then Phil secretly destroys the tape where we head home and see Zane's hanging out with his girlfriend Char, who's played by the lovely Terry Polo, and they're having some relationship struggles. Zane's trying to get a new job, but he finds out his ex-boss has been bad-mouthing him, saying that he's been making up these signals, and then he goes to see his boss, and he denies it all, and has him removed by security. Then he calls his friend Calvin and says there's a backup, but Calvin says it's spy shit, and the spooks came by, and he gives them the tape. Stupid guy. Zane visits Char at work and she didn't tell him about this job opportunity she had where they'd have to move and they have a little fight. Then he goes house to house adjusting people's satellites and creating his own lab. The weird kid from next door is climbing his roof and now he's gained an unnecessary sidekick. He turns all the satellites into one big giant antenna and he tells the kid all about his work. The landscape guys show up but they're the same guys that collect the tapes. We see Calvin's waking up but I guess he's getting killed. The next day Zane and the kid get a signal but then it's followed by a Mexican radio station. Two signals, one from Earth, one from space. He goes to see his friend Calvin, but ambulances and police are there, so he's dead. Down at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, Alana notices a 700% increase of greenhouse trace gases in the last five years. If it continues in 10 years, it will be catastrophic. Well, it's a better be wrong, because according to this, we're looking at an increase of 12 degrees centigrade over the next decade, and that's just- Catastrophic. Well, I was gonna say impossible, but yep, that too. The largest number is from central Mexico, which is the same place Zane goes to. And a cabbie shows up and takes his bags and Zane says he wants to go to this radio station, but when he gets there, it was burnt down last night. So back in the town. He spots the same merchant he saw when he arrived. He also sees Alana, but he decides to go back to his room and take a bath, check some messages, listen to a message from Char, and then he's noticing dripping from above. And then he looks up and he sees that merchant and chases after him. He chases the guy through a cheaper version of a Day of the Dead parade and then he finds the guy's clothes and then he has to search around even harder and he does actually track the guy down to this alleyway and then he gets distracted and looks away. The guy's legs bend the other way and then he jumps a ridiculous height. The next day, Zane is driving around looking for a large satellite, and he sees one, and he also sees Alana getting uh, harassed by some cops, and they're breaking her equipment, and he steps out and tries to help, and they both get arrested. And she is actually impressed that he knows what kind of equipment she carries. A woman comes in and apologizes and says her equipment is broken, and they have a new source of power that they're working at on this power station and don't want any trespassers. And then Zane sees a version, a Mexican version of Phil, and tells Alana, let's get the hell out of here. Then we see Phil back in the States and he visits the bad guys and gives them Zane's address and the kid sees them pull up and go inside and they put this ball in there and it starts to spin. It raises off the ground and lights start coming out and it starts sucking everything in the room into it. His pictures, his equipment, everything till it's all gone. Zane and Alana are having drinks, talking about global warming. Hey, we're all gonna die in a few years. Wanna go back to my place? And then the merchant shows up and he is in her room putting scorpions everywhere. And I thought just a few, but no, there's like a hundred. Zane concludes that all this global warming stuff is terraforming. Maybe the aliens are trying to terraform the planet so that they can live more comfortably here. Then he walks her back to the room and she invites him in. 
but he declines because he's kind of still in a relationship, doesn't really know what's going on there. But he tells her to be careful. What? Yes? Just, just be careful. Then calls Char that night and they talk for a bit and he gets her to look into a company, the one that's running the power plant, and they have like several facilities and 20 plants. And Alana climbs in the bed with several scorpions. So many scorpions were in her room. spies on the power plant, jumps a fence, goes inside, and the lights go out, the ground starts shaking, and a satellite comes out of the ground, clearly alien tech. And his cabbie shows up and gets a face scan, and we see that he's an alien. Stan gets inside and puts on a worker's coveralls, but a worker spots him and sees that he's sweating, and I guess the aliens don't sweat. So he manages to like climb down this elevator, and it goes all the way down deep into the ground, where we kind of see like an alien spaceship and a couple aliens just having some water cooler talk. He spots an alien who steps onto this energy platform and is grafted into a woman. And then he starts snooping around and is spotted by an alien and he gets his picture just showing everywhere, alarms going off and he's having to hide. So he decides to run back to that platform and step on it. It's risky, but he had no other options. And so he strips down and it grafts him into a Mexican Charlie Sheen. And then he rides the elevator back up and his cabbie's in there, but he's getting suspicious. Do you want to see the ruins, my friend? His face is melting and he manages to get outside into this little mini waterfall and just rip off this stuff. And he gets into his car and he hits a Mexican Phil and then he decides to run him over. When he gets back into town, he goes to the police, but there's a case already building up against him and a body comes in and it's Alana's and it looks like she was hit by a car. So they're gonna blame that on him. So he manages to run off and escape because you know, what else would you do in Mexico? Zane shows up at his old job and he finds Phil and tells him to admit to the lies. And he kind of does. He tells him a lot of information, but really doesn't say anything. Says that if he does admit stuff, that he's pretty much dead. But then he tells him all about the terraforming, so. They're terraform factories, aren't they? Yes. You're pumping out greenhouse gas. And now you're dead. You're changing the air, the temperature, and the whole ecosystem. We're just finishing what you started. He filmed it all and then he heads home and he finds a kid next door and he wants to broadcast this tape and he tells him everything. But all his equipment is gone. And then Char shows up and he tries to explain it to her but he just sounds crazy. But she does drive both of them off. They head to a radio observatory of a giant satellite where Char makes a secret phone call from her car while they were trying to get inside. They eventually do get inside and he wants to broadcast the tape to his satellite and get it on all the news stations. But then the power is cut and the DOD guys show up and they attack. Uses a fire extinguisher on one of them because they hate the cold. Van show up and I think Char now believes him and he tells the kid to stay there and push the transmit button when he signals him through the camera which is still operational somehow even though the power is all cut up and he sneaks out and gets into the satellite building and tells Char to watch the door and hold it shut as he's trusting her on that one and he realizes the satellite signals the kid and the kid doesn't do shit he just walks over the door and lets Phil in and the Phil now has the tape it's on his side kid's an alien the aliens are coming so Zane sets up a trap with liquid nitrogen and then they get inside and he freezes them, and he even manages to freeze Phil, but then the giant orb falls, and it's bigger than the one from his house, because that one like didn't hurt the infrastructure, but this one's gonna hurt the infrastructure, and he manages to get the tape out of a frozen Phil's jacket, and Char's already head up to the top of the satellite, and then he finally falls, but this thing is just spinning and sucking everything in there, and it actually collapses the satellite partially, and then they get on top, and they just slide down to the end of it. I don't know how they get down after that, but they do see the kid. The kid's looking up at him and he's just like, it's not gonna be easy for you anymore. 
You go back and tell them that I know, that she knows, that others will know. It's not going to be easy. Not anymore. We get a news report on how warm it is, that would be nice. And then the video plays on everyone's station. The end. There's a sequel despite the fact that this had a $25 million budget and only a $14 million box office. Charlie Sheen was good in this, he committed to the role this was long before Tiger Blood. And then we had Leon Ripley and Ron Silver, both recognizable actors. Leon was in an episode of TNG and Ripley was the main bad guy in Time Cop. Hell of a movie. The director David Twenty had directed and written all of the Riddick movies, including Pitch Black, which was fucking great. He also wrote The Fugitive. Terry Polo was good in her limited role. I really just remember her from Meet the Parents. And Lindsay Krause, she voiced Lissa and Crawl, played by Lissetta Anthony, and it was bad. Like, the dub over made no sense. Lissetta Anthony's voice was perfect to do. Why would you do that? Anyways, it wasn't her fault. In the end, some of the effects on this are a little bit dated. I mean, it was done in 96, but there aren't that many effects in the movie, so it really doesn't matter. It doesn't take you away from it at all. There's also like the cool, like, who is an alien kind of mentality, an invasion body snatchers kind of way. He also had his girlfriend right at the beginning who wasn't sweating after they had sex, and he was just covered in sweat. So it really made her seem like she might be an alien, but she did turn out to be one, maybe in the sequel. But no, he's killed off pretty quickly, and that's all about his brother. It has really nothing to do with any of this. It's pretty pathetic. Um, but yeah, no, I would watch this if I was you, because it's a decent sci-fi. And if you hadn't seen it, well, it's time for that to change. As always, thanks for watching.